Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of history now with me. So, uh, in, in 2005, my, my father collected Maxwell cars. In fact, at one time, he was the owner of seven Maxwell cars. And at that time, they thought he had the most Maxwell cars of anyone that, that had collected Maxwell cars. In 2005, they had a uh, gathering of Maxwell's. In fact, it was the National Maxwell Meet in Newcastle, Indiana, since the Maxwell car had been produced in Newcastle, Indiana. And my father collected Maxwell's because he was born and raised in Newcastle, Indiana. So that's what got him started. Um, at the, the uh, national meet, they talked about Alice. And there was a gentleman there by the name of Richard Anderson from uh, Washington, from the state of Washington. And he and his daughter, Emily, were going to recreate Alice's Drive in 2009. And they talked about this, this drive that they were going to do. And I thought, wow, that would be the most fantastic thing to ever be a part of. Well, my father, that was in, in the summer of 2005, in, in the fall, winter, dad called and he said, okay, he said, if I teach you to drive the Maxwells, would you be willing to join the Alice Ramsey tour and go across country? It didn't take me but a second to say yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I spent the next four springs and summers um, running that, dad had a 1910 Maxwell Model E and a 1910 Maxwell Model Q. And I learned to drive those at the Weegaw Township parking, school parking lot. So that's, that's where I spent my summers, for about four summers, was in that parking lot running the cars. Um, so from there, I've got a few extra. This is Emily. and. Dad actually sold uh, Mr. Anderson a car so that she could be learning to drive while they were building. There is no AD left that we know of. So they had to take parts and pieces that they found of ADs, uh, car model ADs, and build a Maxwell for her. So uh, this is her and her car, and then Dad sold her her car. So, on Sunday, June 14th, 2009, we were loaded and on the road at 6.30 a.m. to pick up Joe Goss and Bob Burkholder. This is Bob. They were to serve as mechanics and rescue vehicle drivers. We stopped to get gas in Fort Wayne and discovered a flat tire on the trailer. As Dad told all of us to grab the tools, I grabbed my camera. Upon arriving at the hotel in Aurora, Ohio, we didn't go all the way, my, my stepmother was ill, and so we did not go all the way to the East Coast, and we did not make it all the way to the West Coast. But upon arriving at the hotel in Aurora, Ohio, we unloaded the car so I could run it around the parking lot and make sure it and I were ready. After a few rounds, Dad determined that the generator had a bad bearing. No fear, he had brought another one, and in a few minutes we had that one on the car, and it was sounding great. This is Bob in the red shirt, my father in the middle, and um, Joe in the plaid shirt. So, we got it on, and it's running great. Just then, Emily and her co-pilot, Christine, arrived with the Alice Ramsey group. After introductions and a fast dinner, we were ready for bed and an early start on Monday, June 6, 15th, 2009. They started there too. They started, they started in, at, in New York. They started in New York on, on June 9th of 2009. At 7.30, oh, 
At 7.30 a.m., there was a driver's meeting in the parking lot to remind us of an ant of antique car touring rules. At 8 o'clock, we rolled onto the road. Dad drove that first morning wanting to make sure that things were running well. I took over after lunch. We were all running together and doing very well. We were not supposed to be on major highways. But outside of Bowling Green, Ohio, Highway 6 joins 20 and 54. In this area, there were five lanes of traffic westbound and five lanes eastbound. Remember, I'm doing 35 total. I heard a noise under the floorboard and looked at Dad. As I was pulling over to the side and shifting down, I noticed parts and pieces flying out from under the car. After stopping, we looked under the car to find a hole in, in the gear housing. This car was not going any further. We called Joe and Bob to come rescue us. It took all of us to load the sick car. We decided to meet up with the Alice group at their afternoon stop. From there, Joe and Bob took off with the truck and trailer to pick up the spare car stashed in a garage in Warsaw, Indiana. Dad and I rode on into Napoleon, Ohio with part of the Alice Ramsey group. Bob and Joe arrived at the hotel at midnight. At five the next morning, we got the Model Q ready with water, oil, gas, etc. to be ready to hit the road at eight o'clock. For good luck, Christy not only crank started Emily's car, but she also started ours. About 12 miles down the road, the radiator exploded. Oh, this is the gears that we lost. And I'll show you real fast. This is, this is the gear. It's supposed to go all the way around. See this piece? Then there's supposed to be one just like it on this piece. So that's the parts and pieces I saw flying out from underneath the car. So we got the radiator and it exploded on us. Um, hot water and steam went everywhere. After locating a radiator shop, removing and immersing the radiator, we knew that the radiator needed major repair. And we were completely out of the Alice Ramsey tour. We decided to drive the truck and trailer on to South Bend to meet up with Emily, Rich, and their crew to thank them for letting us join the expedition and to wish them well in the rest of their endeavor. That's parts of the radiator. We arrived at the South Bend Convention Center where we knew they were to be displaying their car and presenting a program to the Lincoln Highway Members Convention that evening. They were super glad to see us since their car had also broken down just a few uh, miles past ours. They wanted to display their car but needed dad's truck to pull the car out of the basement of the convention center. They invited us to attend the convention and also asked dad's assistance in locating a Babbitt maker so they could get their car repaired. This is, is Rich Anderson and his mechanic. Again, my father and Bob and Joe here at the very front. So. After the convention was over, oh, and that's Emily and then Christy. That Dad's hugging there, so. After the convention was over, Dad pulled the car out of the basement. They loaded the car in their hauler and headed back to Ohio to get it repaired. We went on to the hotel and held a powwow. The next morning we headed to the Gilmore Car Museum in Hickory Hills, Michigan. Dad had loaned them one of his cars to put into a diorama about Alice Ramsey. We thought we might be able to take the gears out of that car and put into the car that had lost them. After several hours and no success, we gave up and came on home. And one of the interesting things was this had, had these plates around the front that were talking about Alice and, 
and how she had made this trip with practically no men's help. And here we had the, the mannequins of Alice, and here's Dad and all three of the guys trying to rip these gears out of this car, you know. <laughs> but we just couldn't get them, get them out. So we, we had to call it quits, and we went home, kind of brokenhearted. Emily and Christy arrived in San Francisco on July 8th after a few more breakdowns, and you can find their blog all about the trip on alicesdrive.com. So, but we had a great time together. And when I, um, when I first, when we signed up to do the, the tour, it said that we had to be in costume. So I made a whole wardrobe full of costumes and then found out we didn't need them and I never got to wear them. <laughs> so now I'm enjoying my costumes. I did get to, to use my duster, as you saw on the, the um, program, or on the, the uh, slides. And it still holds my war wounds from, <laughs> from the car tour. So, but I, I do wear my duster when I drive and I do still wear my cap when I drive. I have so. a coat like that. I have to get it out of the basement and start wearing it around. There you go. <laughs> but you know what? You got to get a car to go with it. <laughs> so. I have little bikes. <laughs> so. What? I do have a set of goggles. I do. Yes. I have a set of driving goggles. So, are there any other questions? So. Yes. Yep. Who was the fourth lady on the trip? I know that you was told that his uh, two sisters. His daughter and then her friend, Christy, okay. was from, his daughter's from Washington. Her friend was from New York. Okay. So when they drove out to, to um, uh, New York to get started, that's where they met up with her friend. So her friend had to learn how to crank start the cars. And, and that type thing, so. I, and I will say, I tried several times. I never did get the cars crank started. I don't know if, Dad tried to teach me, but I just never could. Now, Dad could do it, so, but uh, I, I never could. Given the remoteness of the area, what, what are the odds of running into telephone poles in the pod? So, yes, <laughs> you know, or tell it. so strange to see that in the... To see that in, yes, yes. I, I was the same way. I, and I thought, well, you know, these are pictures that she took or had taken along the way, so... Yeah, when they got out west, they didn't have the blue book. And right. so they'd come to the intersection, and they usually would take the road that had the most wires running on the poles. Uh-huh. Because that... that that was how they, they determined, so they'd find those, those poles. Yeah, that would make sense, because you'd think, okay, there's got to be civilization at the end of that pole somewhere, so that would make sense. So. Did they have blankets or things like when the weather got cold? Did they talk about the weather at all? <laughs> In her book, she does not talk about much about the weather. Because the car is so. open, right? There's no sides or anything. There's no sides. Yeah. There, there is a windshield. There was a windshield on her car. Um, the one that I took just recently, I, uh, I have since sold all of Dad's cars. Dad passed away actually two years ago today, so I'm kind of doing this as a, a memento to Dad. So, um, but anyway, uh, the the one that I was in just recently up in Dearborn, Michigan, we took one of Dad's cars up there. The guy that I sold it to, I told him that when he went on tours he had to call me as a navigator. So I still get to be in the cars. So, but anyway, we were running along and all of a sudden, he rear-ended a bumblebee into my chin. <laughs> so my chin swelled up, but we didn't have a, a, a uh, I asked him about the, the windshield and he said, oh, he said, I like running without the windshield. Well, I found out I really like the windshield, so. <laughs> That, did you find that out and took, took a train? That's what I thought I had heard that I, or I'd read somewhere that yes, they took a train back, so. Uh, 